Hello, my friends. In today's video, we're tackling a very interesting problem of season to date. Now, this involves custom calendar. It involves some DAX fun. Uh, so you're going to enjoy this one. Now, this one comes from one of our Learn Power BI members, Greg Berg. Greg, thanks for this question. And let's dive in. So let's talk about what is going on with this season's thing. Now, actually, before we get started, what I'm going to say, my friends, is that after years of teaching Power BI, I realized that there was a, a, a step missing. And that's why people were struggling often with Power BI. And that missing step is the thought process. Now, I talk more about why that is so important and why that is often overlooked in the video uh, that I'm going to connect either in the corner here or uh, down below in the description. And if you're in the mobile, make sure to tap on the description to watch that video. So watch that video after you have gone through this video. But just to let you know, I'm going to dive a little bit deeper and not just give you the solution, teach, teach, you know, catch you a fish, but also gives you give you the thought process, you know, teach you how to fish, teach you how to solve novel Power BI problems. So again, thought process is the missing step. If you've been struggling with Power BI, keep getting stuck, can't solve real world problems, then that's the one that you need to gain. So I'm going to break it down for you. So let's understand the scenario that Greg is working with. <clears throat> And I'm telling you, calendar is one of my favorite things in Power BI because it never fails to surprise me. I'm like, I, I thought I've seen it all, but now Greg Singh gave me something new, which is a company who has three fiscal seasons. And again, I never quite seen that, you know. But uh, uh, so let's look at here. Let's what's going on. So I, I was used to this idea of a fiscal year. So I worked at Microsoft, and their fiscal year starts in July, but they had four quarters, like normal people <laughs> and but this company has three fiscal seasons it starts in june, june so june july august september that's one fiscal season so uh, right so fy20 and if you're thinking about calendar year uh, so i think fiscal year 20 actually starts in calendar year 2019 and again i i kind of understood that uh, for fiscal years but um but the season was really interesting june july august september october november december january february march april may and Greg's question was that how do I calculate the season to date? So let's step back for a second and talk about calendar table. So start with uh, starting with the Gregorian calendar. And that's the classic calendar, January through December. You know, everybody knows that one, right? So and then the next one is what I call the fiscal calendar. Now, this is, again, kind of like Microsoft's, where the only thing that's different is that the start of the year is shifted. So in case of Microsoft, the start of the year was July 1st. That's a fiscal calendar. And then we have what I call the custom calendar. Now, these are really different and exotic. And here I've pulled up an example from the National Retail Federation. These are often used in retail. And if you notice here, so the key way to differentiate between a custom calendar is when a month is no longer a month. So if you go to Microsoft, walk into Microsoft, and uh, or and some other company which uses a Gregorian calendar, and you would ask what is June, they would all agree June is June one to June thirtieth. Now, custom calendar does may or may not agree, right? So custom calendar that's what it makes it unique. And as you can see in some of these examples, like it's called March, but it has April dates. And, and again, vice versa, like it's called March here. But as you can see, this has February 28th in there. So the rules don't apply. Now, first thing to realize is that that this calendar is really a fiscal calendar, right? So it's not a custom calendar, right? Because again, a month is a month is a month, right? So they always agree in month. So that's a good understanding. So let's before we get to season today. So since they agree on the definition of month, actually, you know what, I'm going to slow myself way down. So again, guys, this is the thought process part, which you need to understand, right? So how am I thinking, I'm trying to figure out what the heck kind of calendar are they using, right? So um, and why are we even talking about calendars? Well, because of the awesome time intelligence functions built into Power BI. And here are the rules, or well, here's how it works. So Power BI time intelligence functions can handle Gregorian calendar. So it has a whole bunch of functions, dates, MTD, quarter to date, year to date, and a whole lot more, right? Previous year, all of that stuff is there. And they can handle this. 
And they also have, uh, well, the same functions take an optional parameter where you can adjust the start of the year, right? So they can also handle this. So Power BI is awesome there. But things totally break down in a custom calendar. Now, why I love the scenario that Greg presented that it's kind of a cross between uh, fiscal calendar and custom calendar, and I'll tell you why. So fiscal calendar, Microsoft can handle if you say, oh, my year starts on July 1, and it can give you month to date, other things like that. So that's where we're going to start. So since we understand that it's a fiscal calendar, which means a month is a month is a month, month to date, Greg doesn't have to do anything. So here's a month to date formula and you can see it is working. And I'm going to show you the pattern. And of course, it's really, really easy. That's the awesomeness of Power BI. So uh, hold on. Yep, there we go. So sales MTD. And guys, uh, if I forget to mention, you can get the file at learnpowerbi.com slash download. So here, again, such a simple pattern. That's what I love about Power BI. Just say calculate this and use the power of time intelligence functions, dates, MTD. And it works for fiscal calendars and Gregorian calendars. It does not work for custom calendars. We talked about that. So this works, and you can see it kind of, you know, just kind of adds up for the whole month. And if we were to uh, change a filter really quick, uh, there we go, is uh, let's try... Uh, hold on one sec. All right, so if you do multiple months, which is what I just did, you can see what the month to date measure is doing, right? It kind of adds up for the month and then resets, adds up for the month and resets, right? So uh, so again, for fiscal calendar, which is what it is, the, the time intelligence functions do work generally, right? But would they break down because they don't have uh, the concept of seasons? I mean, if you had quarters, I, I'm think that would have worked but seasons they don't have a concept of that so the first thing that we need to do is to build it into our calendar table so I'm not going to go too much into that now of course we cover the calendar table quite extensively in uh, in our video online and again we're going to link it um, in the corner here or that corner I don't know one of these corners and of course down in the description we'll put a link to our uh, complete series and of course uh, those who are members in the learn power BI program have access to that as well so for, uh, so, all right, so we need to build that into a calendar table. One quick note that I'm going to say here is that um, uh, you would build the fiscal calendar in the same calendar. You don't need two different calendar tables for, you know, one has the Gregorian calendar, maybe if you use that in some cases, and then have the fiscal calendar. Uh, the same table is going to have uh, both the values there. So this is uh, our ultimate calendar pattern, of course. Again, the link is the same one that I shared earlier, which shows you how, uh, how to use this. And here we have made some changes here to just uh, add the fiscal season. So let's see if I can show that. Yep, there we go. So you can see, uh, and you know, if you remember the kind of year structure we had, January <laughs> is fiscal season two and so forth. So let's uh, go back and look at the seasons again. So again, that's being built into our calendar table. So if we look at the seasons again, uh, January is indeed in fiscal season two. In fact, it's month four of fiscal, se fiscal season two. Why is it hard to say? So that's all built in. So the only thing we need to do is do season to date. Now, of course, if I just take that dates MTD measure, and filter down to a single season, it, it doesn't work. So notice that I don't want it to reset at a month boundary, I want it to keep going, right? That's the idea of season to date, but obviously month to date is just resetting every month and it would reset again if we uh, went on another month, right? So I have here, I have selected a whole season. So October through January is current fiscal season two and I would like a measure which go to grow straight. So that's our task and let's see how we can solve it. All right, so we have sales here, and uh, we're gonna build a sales season to date, not month to date. And of course, right, I mean, there's no date season to date formula, and that's, that's what can be fun about calendar tables, right? I mean, if you run into these unique scenarios. So let's get in here and do a new measure. And so what dates MTD is doing for us kind of automatically, it, does the logic will have to kind of program that logic so let's get in here and let's do sales season to date all right so there we go 
And, and the first thing that we're going to start with here, so we'll try to understand first how a human would do it. You probably heard me say this, human learning comes before machine learning. So as a human, what I need to do is if I want to accumulate all of these ones, right, do accumulative total, well, first of all, I need to figure out which season I'm in, right? So again, imagine like right now I'm looking at this date, October 1, 2019, and I want to see like, well, what season is that, right? And then I'll expand my, my you know, what I'm looking at, filter context, right? So that, you know, a filtered set of rows that I'm looking at, which is a filter context, I'm going to expand that to have be that whole season. But wait a second, not the whole season. We don't want to go beyond the current date, the today's date, right? So we're going to stop uh, right there, right? So if you're in October 4, we're going to stop there. So right, so remember this three steps, right? So uh, we got to figure out what season we're in. And then we have to, uh, you know, kind of expand and look at all of that season. And then we'll say, well, well yeah, don't don't go beyond the date uh, uh, we're looking at. So, so let's start by deciding that boundary first, right? So we're going to start with a variable here. And we're going to say, what is the max date? And I like to start my variables with a V just so I can kind of keep them apart from my measures. So I'm going to say max and calendar date, right? So that gives me that final boundary that I shall never cross. And now I think we can start building a measure. So calculate magic wand we're, we know we're going to be messing with this uh, filter context so we pretty much need that and what is the math we're doing the expression is still still sales which is you know just the sum of sales amount so that's great right and then we need to zoom out right so right now think about and again whenever you think about measures for one never try to write a measure with a graph always have a table or a matrix table is better right and always think about a single cell so imagine we're in this cell and, 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 you know, well, first of all, we need to clear this filter because right now we're just looking at October 6th. So, right, so that obviously wouldn't give us the answer. So I'm going to start by just clearing everything in the calendar. So I'm going to clear everything in the calendar. But remember, we, we, and, and we need to look at only the, uh, the season that we're in. And how do we do that? Well, we can do that using the values function. And we can say, well, whatever the incoming value of the fiscal year season was, so it was, you know, FY20 fiscal season two, all right, or FY21 fiscal season three, whatever that was, bring that filter back in. So you saw what we did. I mean, we went, well, yeah, just, you know, look at all the calendar. Oh, but wait, wait, only the current season. And that leaves only step three, which is, yep, current season, but do not go beyond the current date. So we're going to uh, pull up our calendar table date value and it would say yep just you know stop right at the, the date and we've already figured out that boundary in the v max date variable so guys again i mean hopefully you saw kind of the thought process that i'm using to build this and that's what's most important now to pick up these skills or patterns or yeah i mean you can learn a thousand of those but as soon as you hit something new you're gonna get stuck and i'm gonna guarantee you you probably already experienced that so let's see in action so perfect, our measure is done, and I can kind of visually see it uh, uh, well in the table, but of course it'll be best to see it in uh, in this graph. So I'm going to go in here and add the season to date, and you can see it's kind of you know counting up. It's not doing resetting it every month like the month to date version was, and of course we can uh, clear some of our filters to go across multiple seasons. Let's try that. So I'm going to bring in uh, maybe a few other seasons too. And you can see how the fiscal season to date is resetting at every season boundary. And man, this calendar is so funky, I can't, can't ever remember, but uh, I'm assuming that's right. So February is a season boundary. Uh, this, you know, kind of this June is a season boundary, right? So it's resetting that. So that's our season to date. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. Now, uh, make sure to subscribe, give it a thumbs up and click that bell. So you're notified whenever we go live to answer your Power BI question. And a big thanks to Greg again for submitting this question. We're going to uh, put a link to his profile, uh, his LinkedIn profile, so you can reach out and connect with him if you like. All right. Until next time, power on, my friends.